Welcome everyone to Unscripted Coding. Today we're going to talk about Cohere, and they are another AI company similar to Anthropic and OpenAI, of course. They have their own large language model, and today we're going to explore, first of all, their chatbot, their chat GPT equivalent, but we're also going to dive down into some of their documentation and see how far we can get. I have a feeling that we're going to get pretty excited and we're going to have to split this video up into a couple different sessions to really give them their due credit. So first of all, let's talk about Cohere. They are a bit of a dark horse in this race. There's a good chance you've never heard of them before, but they're generally pretty consistently third, fourth, fifth in the rankings of models across a lot of different measures. And that's pretty impressive because you are competing with juggernauts like Google and, and OpenAI. But they have consistently just been a little bit behind the curve when it comes to what everyone's measuring. But they have a very different focus. So where OpenAI is trying to create ChatGPT so we can all ask ChatGPT about memes and telling us jokes and doing very basic tasks, Cohere is laser focused in trying to create a market with enterprise, business, company kind of markets. This is the corporate world. And so they're less focused about how human it is, how much it can crack a joke. It can do that. But more importantly, how to deliver features that have real productivity gains. And that's something we've been doing a lot of here on this channel. How do we build useful tools? And so Cohere and their approach really resonates with me. Now we're, we're gonna go into the dashboard and playground and APIs very soon, but I think just looking at their chatbot right here, you get a sense of what it can do. So very quickly, you have the Just Chat tab, everything you think AI chatbots can do, Cohere does it as well. You can ask it to just converse with you, have a few jokes and laughs, summarize text, whatever. All of that is done capably so by Cohere. But more importantly, you're seeing these two features here. There's the web search and there's the analyze files. So first let's talk web search. Uh, they are similar, I think, to the Bing uh, Copilot chatbot where it connects to the internet. It has an LLM in the back, but it's searching the internet through a separate connection, finding it relevant information, and then adding it to the prompt or context you're sending the AI LLM. Uh, they're not doing anything different, so if I were to pick one of their random prompts, uh, let's try this one. Give me an overview of global solar panels market. You're going to see that they are going to connect with a web search connector. They're going to search something and then finally summarize it for you. This is very similar to Bing, as I said, also perplexity. Now, what's really nice about this is that unlike uh, perplexity, whose API is very limited. Uh, this is built right into their AI, uh, right into their API. So uh, you can enable web search connector, and it's a similar experience to OpenAI, still kind of finicky assistance API. And so you can see right now that it has nine references. You can click into them, and it's providing the citations. All really useful, and I actually found this one to be quite good at searching for things on the internet. So it's nice to have different uh, approaches to this. Now I'm waiting for it to finish, good, because the other feature was analyzing files. So if you click this grounding tab, um, there are a couple different options here that are pretty cool. First of all, this web search container, you can ground it to a domain. So if you're a business and you want to just make it a chatbot about what is publicly available on your own website, you know, ground it to your own website or ground it to a trustworthy source. And that will ensure that it's not going just 
anywhere on the web to find things. It's, it's situated in one area. But the other thing is you can drag and drop a bunch of files. And what I found is that Cohere Coral, and this is why I did this video, is by far the best chat with PDF experience. Now you may have seen it before, but chat with PDF used to use GPT 3.5 and 4 and allow you to upload a PDF file and have a conversation about its contents. It worked so-so because it wasn't great at picking out all the details. But here, um, I uploaded a document and just for demonstrative purposes here. These are notes. These are student notes and this is a very long dense document. Um, this is out of date as well by the way but uh, quite quite dense. I'm just gonna quickly you know um, ask something about it. So we know that uh, it's in here. I'm gonna take out the web search and add the file so it knows where to search. And I'm going to ask, uh, what is this provision? So here we know that's from the Insurance Act. Uh, innocent co-insured will be section 35. There's a whole bunch of text. Uh, and I'm just going to ask it, what is the provision? And what does it say? And now it's trying to dive into the document, hopefully fetching the right section here. So it has a nice summary. And I have no idea if this is right or not, but more importantly, can you reproduce the section for me? What I was hoping for is just this entire section reproduced verbatim here. And so here we are, part two, section 35, A, B, C, one, two, three. And, and it correctly picks it out. And I'm just gonna assume this is correct. Very exciting for me personally. Um, but if you look at it, uh, these are Cohere's big, big features here. Being able to search the internet and search documents. And whoever nails that really, really well, I think are going to win enterprises over. And frankly, GPT, their assistance API is acceptable, but not amazing yet. And so when we go into their dashboard, this is the playground that uh, you can use. This is for developers to figure out how all of this is working. You're going to see something uh, very similar but more familiar. So we're gonna go and ask the same question as up here, I think is over here. Um, and we're gonna paste this question. And remember, we have the web search enabled here. What's really nice is that you see under the hood what is going to happen here and how it works. But even more cool is that if you were to try and get this um, get this started, you're going to be able to find um, right here, that all you need to do is just enable the connector web search. The chat will handle all of it on their side and it, it is much easier and much quicker than OpenAI solution. And if we come back here, sorry, I should really slow down a little bit. Um, we come here, we create, uh, we just start the message and turn on web search and it is done. And you're going to see a response like this in which you have a bunch of citations right here with the snippet, the title, the URL, and so on. So uh, you can recreate this answer pretty easily. All of this is streamed 
And so you can see that it's waiting for it to really finish before it creates this final response. Response, chat history, citations, documents. And it's very, very specific because it is telling you exactly which part of the text the citation is happening. So character 521 to 550, this is a text in here. Um, and it's going to tell you which documents are related to it, and then it's going to show you the link. So very impressive, very easy to use. Um, where I was a bit more disappointed is that they have such a focus on RAG, which is retrieving documents and retrieving information from uh, within documents, and the performance in Coral is so good. But when I dove into it, it's not close to as easy as this web searching. Um, and so if you take a look, and we're going to have to split this into a separate video, I'm taking way too long to say all of this, uh, you have your classic semantic search embeddings. Um, they do have something really interesting, which are these connectors in which you can automatically uh, connect it to SharePoint, to Google Drive, to Dropbox and others. So um, let's take a really quick look at Dropbox and how it, it talks about it, but um, it's going to search all the files in there. Um, you're going to have to provide a key and a secret uh, and, and let it go. So so they have pre-provided these connectors to ingest all the documents for you already, but it's not the same. I, I wish it was simple like OpenAI's uh, ability to just upload some files into it, but it doesn't seem that way. So um, next time we're going to come back and see if we can get one of these connectors working with, say, one of my random folders in Dropbox and see how that works. But um, if nothing else, I really highly recommend going to coral.cohere.com and trying their free chatbot because it it is very much geared towards productivity and it's very, very impressive if you uh, insert a bunch of documents and ask questions about it. Now, I'm just a little bit sad because there is a max of 20 megabytes of files. Not the end of the world, but uh, it does mean you can't have uh, a ton in there. Um, I hope that was interesting. Uh, I haven't seen a whole lot of talk about Cohere, and as I keep diving into it, I am very pleasantly surprised by the whole experience and how everything is coming together. So one big example is this web search thing alone is cheaper than GPT-4 by a lot and works similar to what I thought perplexity would do. Uh, but as you may know, if you're a subscriber to this channel, uh, a few weeks ago when we looked at Perplexity, which is that AI search engine, um, its API was basically unusable, whereas right off the bat, I can see Cohere has done a lot to make this web searching very simple and well thought out. So give it a shot and subscribe and check us out next week where we'll probably dive deeper into this topic unless something else interesting crops up. Thanks for watching. I'll see you around. Bye.